Hello guys and welcome back to the channel. In this video I will give you the second part of my farming guide for the Grand Nero Fest 2023 event. If you haven't watched it yet, I highly advise you to check out part 1 of my guide, I will link it in this video for easy access, in which I have given you a detailed overview of the event, covering the gacha seas and the servants on rate up for the summoning banner of Nero Fest 2023, as well as our lottery CE, a detailed look at the event lottery and how it compares to the coming Summer 6 event, and finally an overview of the best free quest to farm, with tips regarding which rotation you should farm based on currency drop rates and farming comps availabilities. I will assume you already know everything from part 1, so in this second part of the guide we will jump straight to farming efficiency. More precisely, I will go into details over how many free golden apples we can get from the event, the increase in efficiency with each new round regarding all event currencies, both shop and lotto currency, which I have already mentioned briefly at the end of part 1 of this guide, We'll take a quick look to see how the single level 90 nodes uh, will compare to the mixed level 90 plus nodes uh, when it comes to shop currencies farming. This is basically my standard benchmark to see how the single level 90 nodes uh, compare to the new mixed level 90 plus nodes. And of course the bulk of the guide will focus on the lottery, comparing the monarch level 90 single nodes uh, to the champion level 90 plus mixed nodes. We will analyze lotto currency drop rates, lotto C drops, ascension material drops, as well as QP farming and bond farming. We can now start in earnest talking about free golden apples you can get from this event. As I reminded you in the first part of the guide, lottery events are the best place to use Oreo apples. And while we veteran players for sure have already a big stack of apples ready, even if you are a relatively new player, you can expect to get a fair amount of free apples from this event that you can immediately spend in this event to get all the goodies from the lottery. I will assume a master level of 150 for all my following calculation and graphs. This was the master level cap until Lost World 5.5 released in November of last year. We have only gotten one lottery event since then, that was Karnamas that came right after Lost World 5.5, so we didn't get many chances to level up our master level to the new cup. At least personally I'm not there. If instead you have reached the master level 153 or 157, those are the two levels at which you get extra action points, or APs for short, then simply give yourself one free golden apple for each 142 or 71 golden apples in all the following graphs. That way you will take into account the extra APs each golden apple will give you. In the 14 days of the event, you'll get around 28 golden apples of natural APs. Unfortunately, these can't be moved around, so they will need to be spent to farm each respective rotation. By rolling at least 10 lotto boxes, that is completing the event, getting all the grand prizes, you will get around 34 golden apples. This is assuming you won't reset your lotto box early, risking to lose some of these apples. I have already warned you about this possibility in the first part of this guide, so be careful. Furthermore, you will get one golden apple for each 4.7 extra lotto boxes you will farm. That's why every lottery event creates a self-supporting cycle. Meaning, the more you farm the lottery, the more free apple you will get, being able to farm the lottery even more, keeping this cycle going. 
Finally, if you have yet to reach the new master level cap, you can potentially get one free golden apple for each new master level, for a maximum of 10 golden apples if you have already reached the master cap last November. Let's now start talking about efficiency, and first of all we'll take a look at the efficiency increase with each new rotation or round. As I already explained in part 1 of this guide, this event will feature 3 different rotations of request to farm. As I said before, you should first of all farm the rotation for which you have the best farming comps or that drops the ascension materials you need the most. With that said, if you can reliably farm all 3 rotations and you don't have any bias over them, you should keep in mind that for each new rotation, for all event currencies, both shop and lotto, there is a flat increase in the number of currency drops. By flat I mean that it won't scale with your drop bonus, aka with the number of event seas in your party. In other words, assuming your drop bonus remains the same in each rotation, on average you will get a fixed extra amount of currencies per run if you farm the following rotation instead of the first one. This increase in efficiency with each new rotation will come in play in most of the following sections of this part of the guide. If you have watched my farming guide for the dance tournament in the Land of Shadow Lottery, then you should already be familiar with this pattern. The way it works is that they will keep the total drop rate for currency stacks that can drop while farming the free quests constant for each new rotation. This total drop bonus is the number that is multiplied by your currency drop bonus, determining how much you can scale with the number of event C's in your party. Since it remains the same in each rotation, you will scale with your total drop bonus in the exact same way. What changes in each rotation is that the total drop rate of currency stacks is split differently among all type of stacks that can drop. More precisely, the bigger stacks containing more currencies will see their drop rate increased for each new rotation by exactly the same amount the drop rate of the smaller stacks is reduced, keeping the total drop rate of stacks constant as we have said before. Since bigger stacks of currency drop more frequently in the following rotations, then by farming them you will get a flat extra amount of currencies that is not influenced in any way by your currency drop bonus. This trend of increasing efficiency with each new rotation is exactly the same for all event currencies, both shop and lottery, in all farming nodes. That's why you will see it in almost every graph coming up next. On the screen you can check an example taken from the previous lottery, the dance tournament in the Land of Shadows, since the pattern was similar back then. As you can see, in all three rotations you could get on average 15 stacks of lotto currency. This is the fixed total drop rate of lotto stacks. However, while the first round could only drop stacks of 3 lotto currencies each, in the second round, on average, 3 stacks among the 15 total were converted in stacks containing 4 lotto currencies each. Similarly, in the third round, 5 among the total 15 stacks were converted in stacks containing 4 lotto currencies meaning the following rotation gave you a flat amount of extra lotto currency. See, all the time you spent doing math in high school was not wasted. Moving on to shop currency farming, since this event has a lottery, no matter the situation, the most efficient way to clear the event shop is by farming the champion nodes, aka the level 90 plus mixed nodes. As I explained in part 1 of this guide, these nodes have the best drop rate for lot of currency while also dropping all shop currencies. Since you'll want to use all your apples in this event, you will naturally clear the shop without noticing farming the level 90 plus nodes. 
your priority should always be the Lotto currency, so don't use Gacha Seas while farming the champion nodes, unless you are still lacking some Lotto Seas or you have just max lane broken one, meaning you have a free slot in your party that you can't fill with a Lotto Sea. Even in this case I will consider bringing a Bond Bonus C, since the extra rupees you will get by converting the extra shop currencies dropped is not worth it in my opinion. Even if you can't reliably farm the level 90 plus mixed nodes, you should force yourself and farm them at least until you have cleared the event shop. You should really avoid farming the lower rarities single nodes for shop currencies, meaning you should avoid farming the advanced, expert and heroic nodes if possible. Why is that the case you may ask? That's because the champion nodes in this event are the best mixed nodes in the last year when it comes to shop currencies. They are slightly better than the last lottery event. And this is the case even if we completely disregard their better drop rate for lotto currency compared to single nodes. To put it in another way, the mixed nodes are so good compared to single nodes that if you are not farming them, you are hampering yourself. For a quick idea on how much better they are, here are my usual quick rules to decide which node to farm. Assuming you still need all three currencies to clear the event shop, in the worst case, where you can use max three base gacha seas in the mixed node, since even free to player setups have three slots available for seas, even if, for example, you are using three different starting MP charges on three different DPS to clear each room. Then you should consider farming single nodes only if your single drop bonus is at least five. Instead, in the best case, when you can use all the seas for the single node, even for the mixed node, meaning you can always get the optimal farming setup that can use any C you want, then you should consider farming single nodes only if your single drop bonus is at least 9. This last number should really give you the idea on how much better the mixed nodes are when it comes to shop currencies. I repeat, even if I haven't considered any lotto currency drop in this analysis, and the mixed nodes are better than the single nodes in that regard, which is the main reason you want to farm the lottery event. To put things into perspective, to reach a single drop bonus of 9, you need to use in your party 2 max lane broken gacha seas, together with 3 base gacha seas and 1 extra max lane broken copy from supports. That's how many you need to only start considering farming the single nodes. For the definitive answer you'll need the complete rule that I will quickly show you guys. As always we'll call X your total single drop bonus while farming the single nodes and Y your total mixed drop bonus while farming the mixed nodes. In other words how many gacha seas you can use in your farming setups. Just count the number of seas remembering that each maximum broken copy count as two. Combining these two numbers, just draw the point of coordinates X and Y in the graph on the screen. If it falls in the colored region above the blue or purple lines, then mixed nodes are better for you. Since this time the three single nodes have slightly different drop rates for gold, silver and bronze mats, I have used the gold nodes as reference for this comparison with the mixed nodes. That's because they have the highest drop rate of shop currency, probably to compensate the higher rarity seas required to increase the drop bonus, so these gold nodes are the ones that can face off better against the mixed nodes. In other words, for the bronze and silver single nodes, you will get slightly different lines with bigger colored regions above them, meaning the mixed nodes are even better compared to them. 
there are two lines in the graph, the blue one and the purple one, since the comparison between the nodes will change slightly with each new rotation. Here I have plotted the first round and the final third round. As you should have guessed, the reason for this change is the flat increase of all event currencies for each new rotation, which I already explained before. Here you can see how the flat increase in efficiency favors the mixed nodes, since the line in the graph is translated down with each new rotation, increasing the colored region above where mixed nodes are better than single nodes. The most keen observers among you should have noticed that the slope of the line doesn't change. That's because, as I explained before, this flat increase doesn't scale with your drop bonus, so it can only affect the intercept of the line, not the slope. As a final note, on the screen you can check the details of the quick rule I gave you earlier, the one for the best case scenario, which is obtained by finding the intersection of the line with the first bisector. And as you can see, while it's true that in the first round you need at least a single drop bonus of 9 to even consider farming single nodes, thanks to the flat increase in efficiency favoring the mix of nodes, in the third round you'll need to reach at least a single drop bonus of 10 if you want to even consider farming single nodes. But let's be honest, all you want from this event is spinning the lottery, so from now on we will focus on the two best lot nodes. The level 90 single monarch node dropping only lotto currency and the level 90 plus mixed champion node dropping all event currencies. First of all, just as I have anticipated in the first part of this guide, the monarch and champion nodes have the same drop rate for lotto currency. Since lottery is king, you should farm the one for which you can afford the highest drop bonus, meaning the one for which you can bring more lotto C's in your party. With that said, if your drop bonus for both nodes is the same, then mixed node will give you some extra benefits. The most important one in my opinion is the higher drop rate for the Lotto CE, since this one directly impacts how many boxes you can farm. In fact, if you can get an extra C drop earlier, that means your drop bonus will increase earlier, giving you some extra Lotto currency to spin the lottery more. That's why when it comes to max efficiency in spinning the lottery, most dedicated players usually farm the mixed nodes until they get 5 maximum broken copies of the Lotto C, having reached the maximum drop bonus in your party. So technically the mixed nodes are slightly more efficient than single nodes when it comes to Lotto currency, since they will let you reach the max possible drop bonus slightly earlier. Or in any case, if you want to reach the max drop bonus, just a higher drop bonus slightly earlier. This was always the case with all our previous lotteries, but this particular one is a bit of an oddball. That's why I will only say now that on average, the mixed node has a higher drop rate for the Lotto C, and I will give you the details in a few minutes. Moving on with the benefits of the mixed node, it also has better drop rates for ascension materials and drops newer ones. Of course, every account has different needs for different ascension materials, so you may want to farm a single node instead, but overall I would say that mixed nodes are definitely better in this regard. Next, we have the ever so useful QP farming. In fact, after you have cleared the event shop, you can convert all the extra shop currencies dropped in QPs. This is a no-brainer win for the mixed nodes, since every account needs QPs. Lastly, you should not forget that event lotteries are the best place to pawn farm, and of course even level up a particular mystic codes if you can. 
since while leveling you will get uh, all the goodies uh, from the lottery. That are what makes uh, the event lotteries the best uh, and most efficient way to dump uh, all your apples. Usually reaching high bond level with supports is not a problem, since they are useful in basically any team, so they will level up naturally. Instead, leveling up the bond of single target DPS or maybe niche semi supports is generally more difficult, since most of the time we can take care of our farming needs with a single AoE DPS and a full squad of supports. Of course, you can always put uh, single target DPS in the back slot of your party, and that's exactly why in the third and final part of this guide I will rate higher farming setups with lower party cost, since they will let you bond farm with higher rarity servants in the back slot. However, if you are able to use those single target DPS in the front line while farming, that's surely the most efficient way to bond farm with them, since you don't need to rely on your back slots, which can be used for some other servants, at least if your party cost will let you bring that specific servant in the back slot. To summarize, the different layout of enemies in the mixed nodes will let you bond farm with single target DPS, which usually would require a back slot dedicated to them, maybe causing problems with your total party cost. Remember that leveling up the bond of your servants is extremely important, not only you will get quartz to roll on the gacha more and the bond C is at bond 10 which hopefully will get buffed in JPs soon enough, but extra bond level will also give you servant coins which are needed for append skills and to grail your servants past level 100. Currently, bond levels are the only way to get extra coins for one specific servant without summoning extra copies, which you may be unable to do since that specific servant might not have gotten a rate up yet. Again, Lazengel, for God's sake, fix the coins. Now I can finally start giving you some actual numbers. As I anticipated in part 1 of this guide and at the beginning of this second part of the guide, there is a flat increase in efficiency for all event currencies with each new rotation. If we restrict ourselves to the Monarch and Champion nodes, which I repeat have basically the same best drop rate for lot of currency, then jumping from round 1 to round 2, there is a flat increase of 3.3 lotto currencies for each run. And similarly, going from round 2 to round 3, there is a flat increase of 5 lotto currencies for each run. I repeat again, this amount won't scale with your drop bonus, aka with the number of lotto C's in your party. In other words, if we assume your drop bonus remain the same in each rotation, this is also the total extra amount of lotto currency you will get in the following rounds, from a single run of the free quests. As you can see from the graph on the screen, on average you can expect 2 extra lotto boxes for each 100 golden apple spent if you farm round 2 instead of round 1. Comparing to round 1, round 3 will instead give you 5 extra lotto boxes for each 100 golden apple spent. As you can see, the increase in efficiency is not such a big deal, so as I said in the first part of this guide, it should be the last concern in your mind while you are deciding which rotation to farm. Focus on all the other benefits I've talked about, like ascension materials, bond farming with a specific servant, and of course even your availability to farm in a specific time frame. However, if you have no bias for one specific rotation, then farming the third and final round will let you open just a little bit of extra lotto boxes. In particular, even if you have zero apples saved up for this event, 
with the 34 free golden apples you will obtain in this event, you'll get on average 1.67 extra lotto boxes. At least Holmes will surely appreciate the extra dust. Moving on, let's analyze the Lotto C drops you can get while farming the Monarch and Champion nodes. Just a few minutes ago I said that this event is a bit of an oddball. In fact, in all previous lotteries that had a rotation system like this one, for example the dance tournament in the Land of Shadows exactly one year ago, the drop rate for the Lotto C remained the same in all three rotations. Instead, this time the drop rate for the Lotto C slightly change with each new rotation with a trend that it's different for the Monarch compared to the Champion nodes. As you can see from the graph on the screen right now, the level 90 plus mixed nodes have the best Lotto C drop rate in the first round, which will decrease in round 2, only for it to increase in round 3 without reaching however the same max values as in round 1. Instead, the level 90 single nodes will have their lowest drop rate for Lotto C in round 1, it will increase in round 2, strangely surpassing the Lotto C drop rate of the mixed nodes, and finally it will decrease in round 3, but without reaching the minimum value of round 1. To summarize, the drop rate for Lotto C is higher on average for the champion level 90 plus mixed nodes compared to the monarch level 90 single nodes. The second round is the only one for which the monarch nodes have better drop rate for the Lotto C compared to the champion nodes. It's also the round for which we have the smallest difference between the two nodes, with the two drop rates being very similar. Instead, the first round has the biggest difference between the Champion and Monarch nodes, so it's the one we'll use for our following analysis, meaning we'll be checking the maximum benefits you can get by farming the mixed nodes. To give you the numbers, the drop rate for the Lotto C is at minimum 2.06% for the Monarch level 90 Lotto nodes while it's at maximum 2.62% for the champion level 90 plus mixed nodes. As I said, these are the values for round 1. Using these values, I've plotted the graph on the screen right now, showing the average expected number of C drops depending on the number of golden apples spent while farming the Monarch and the Champion nodes. If this is your first time playing Nerofest or if you have burned all your previous Lotto Seas, then since you'll only get 4 Lotto Seas from the shop, for max efficiency wait until getting 4 Lotto Sea drops before max limit breaking your first copy. That's because you want to max limit break your first copy only when you can reach the same drop bonus that you add without that max limb broken copy by filling your entire party with base lotto C's. After max limb breaking it, you should have a free slot in your party that you can use for example for bond C's or if you really want even the smallest amount of extra QP's, you can bring one of the gacha C's. To guide you until you reach the max possible drop bonus of uh, plus 12, with 5 personal max limb broken copies of the Lotto C in your party and one from supports, I have plotted two types of horizontal lines in the graph. The orange dash dotted lines show when you'll get an extra max limb broken Lotto C, from the first one at 4 C drops to the fifth and final one at 21 C drops. Instead, the green dashed lines show when you'll get an extra drop bonus, that is, on the first C drop you'll get and one drop after each new maximum broken C, aside the fifth and final one. As I explained in the first part of this guide, I am assuming you'll only get 4 copies of the Lotto C from the shop, because that was the case with the original event and with 
all other lotteries event we have gotten so far. If instead the wiki is right and you get 5 copies of the Lotto C from the shop, then to correct the graph simply translate down by 1 both the orange and the green lines. Similarly, if you have played the original event and kept the Lotto C's, then you should translate down both the orange and green lines by the amount of lot C's you already have, remembering that each maximum broken copy counts as 5 C's. For example, I personally have 4 maximum broken lot C's and 1 base lot C, meaning I should translate down the lines by 21, making them all disappear below the zero except for the final line corresponding to the max drop bonus now being at zero C drops, which is correct since with just the four lot C's from the shop I'll be able to maximum break my last copy, thus reaching the max possible plus 12 drop bonus. My case aside, let's assume that you'll need more lot C drops. Then, between each orange line corresponding to a maximum broken C and the next green line corresponding to the next C drop, you can use one gacha C or bon bon C to fill the free C slot in your party, just as I explained before. Now, for some more easy to understand numbers. The mixed nodes compared to single nodes will save you on average 11.7 golden apples for each new maximum broken C. So if you farm mixed nodes you'll be able to use these saved apples to farm with a higher drop bonus, meaning you'll be able to open more lot boxes when compared to farming single nodes. Assuming you start this event with zero lot C's from the past, mixed nodes will let you save 61.4 golden apples for the fifth and final maximum broken C at plus 12 drop bonus. As you can see, it's not a small amount of apples that will be used with a higher drop bonus. For those of you who want to know a bit more, the binomial standard deviation for C drops at fixed apple spent is plotted in the graph below as a light blue line around the mean value of C drops. This graph refers to the mixed node of round 1 to be precise. As you can see, the deviation of C drops will always be within plus or minus 1 maximum broken lot C on average. Basically, this shows how much lucky or unlucky you can get with your C drops. Using instead Pascal distribution for the standard deviation of the golden apple spent at fixed C drops, you can expect to spend 43 plus or minus 31 golden apples for each new maximum broken C. You can use this number to guess how many extra maximum broken C you'll be able to get depending on your current amount of golden apples. If you start this event with zero lot C's from the past, you can expect 226 plus or minus 49 golden apples for the fifth and final maximum broken C. I hope you have enough stocked up. Now let's take a look at the ascension materials that can drop while farming the monarch and the champion nodes. Overall, mixed nodes are more efficient than single nodes when it comes to AP for each drop compared to the best free quests available. As you can see, mixed nodes have basically the same efficiency as the best free quest available, while for single nodes the efficiency is consistently lower. Another important point is that single nodes drop materials that are older, compared at least to the newer materials dropped in the mixed nodes. Veteran players should already have a big stock of old materials, so for them mixed nodes are definitely better. And of course even new players will benefit from them since they are probably summoning new servants that require those new materials. Finally, unless you are really needing a lot of arts, you should avoid farming the single node of round 3, since it drops pages which are already included in the lottery. 
Of course, every account is different, so depending on your servants you may need a lot of old materials, thus wanting to farm the single nodes, but overall I would say that mixed nodes are definitely better for most of us. Let's conclude this efficiency analysis talking about copy farming. The only thing we can agree is needed in every account. As I already explained before, the champion level 90 plus mixed nodes drop shop currencies which can be converted in QPs when you have already cleared the event shop. In particular, Nero Fest is twice more efficient than previous lottery events when it comes to QP farming. It was the case even for the original event. That's because the exchange rate of gold currencies for QPs in the event shop is twice more efficient than usual. Frankly, I think this is a black spot on Gilgamesh reputation. Come on, the Golden King with Golden Rule, he should have given us more QPs for battle in New York. Anyway, compared to the first round, in the second and third round there is the usual average flat increase of shop currencies dropped for each run, that again, for the last time, won't scale with your drop bonus. So, on average, the second round gives around 19,000 extra cupies each run, while the third round gives around 33,000 extra cupies each run. These numbers may be small, but remember you'll be farming this event a lot. So if you have enough apples saved up, if you focus on the following rotation instead of round 1, you'll be able to get some extra million copies. To put things into perspective, I've plotted in the graph on the screen the average million copies you can expect depending on the number of golden apples spent for all 3 rounds. As I already said previously, I'm assuming you clear the event shop and no gacha C is used in your party. Since for the extra copy you'll get, you are definitely better using a bond bonds C instead, which will help you get more quartz for the coming summer banner or more coins for a pen skills or grailing past level 100. Of course, here I'm talking about the free slot in your party right after you maximally break one Lotto C. Most of the time while farming you will have six Lotto C in your party. To summarize the results of the graph, the third round on average gives one million copies for each golden apple spent. In other words, this is the slope of the purple line in the graph, which would increase with gacha C usage in your party. So just take a look at how many golden apples you have after you have cleared the event shop, and that's the total million of copies you can expect at the end of the event. Only for farming the mixer node, I mean. You will also get cupies by spinning the lottery. You should use those cupies for leveling up, uh, grailing uh, as you get them, to avoid reaching the QP cap if you are close to it. This concludes the second part of this guide. I hope this helped you understand what lies below the surface of our beloved game. And if you have found this type of content useful, please let me know by leaving a comment, a like or subscribing to the channel, since it's really your support that keeps me going. Part 3 covering the best farming setup is almost done. It really is the voiceover that takes a lot of time but it should be out in time for the start of the event, which was just announced. I told you they wouldn't dare to skip a lottery event. Anyway, that's all for today guys, I hope I'll see you again the next time. Bye bye.